cannot have an amazing customer experience if your employee experience isn't world class. And that's what I've devoted myself to for the past seven years is understanding customer experience management, how customers behave, how they purchase, why do they do what they do. I need to give you guys some context. I need you to trust me and I have five minutes to get you to trust me. So let me tell you what I've been doing for the past seven years, but I promise I'll take seven minutes to do it. 2003, I went to university. I was out of high school. I was really, really excited to learn how to build businesses. But I went to university, went to a top tier school, went there for two years. And after the second year, I realized I knew three things. I knew what opportunity cost meant. I knew what price elasticity meant. And then I knew I could drink a bottle of Crown Royal without falling down. So I was at a crossroads. I was like, I'm not, I shouldn't be here. I had major ADD, was barely going to class, but I still knew I wanted to grow businesses. So I reached out to my grandfather. My grandfather grew up and lived in Lima, Peru, and he grew a, a successful seafood business. So he was B to B and B to C. So he was selling to restaurants and hotels, but he was also selling to people like us that wanted to put a salmon filet on the barbecue during the summer and entertain guests. So I turned to him and I said, Granddad, I'm stuck. I want to build businesses. I just don't know if I want to be a sales guy. Did I want to excel in marketing, HR, PR? I had no idea. So I gave him my pitch being like, maybe I should be a sales guy for these reasons or maybe marketing. Then he said, focus on customer service. Go out and be the master of customer service. So even more confused, I was like, I was like, old man, you want me to spend tens of thousands of dollars to get my degree and work at a grocery store as a bag boy? So you see, I equated customer service to menial jobs. I didn't understand what the ROI of customer experience was. So he sat me down and, is anybody here South American? Okay, so when your grandfather tells you to sit down, you sit down. You don't, like, there's no arguing at all. There's, you know, the, our blood boils at one degree. So I sat down. And then he started teaching me about things such as customer loyalty, customer lifetime value, customer retention, brand admiration, and organic growth. So referrals and repeat business. I believe that our grandparents were way better entrepreneurs than we are today because they had no idea what PPC was. They had no idea what SEO was. They only knew what TLC was, tender love and care. I was playing basketball one summer and my friend Naveed Sharif was working at 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I had seen the trucks on the road, didn't really know the back end story. Went home, educated myself, learned about Brian Scudamore, learned about the company, interviewed, got hired, started off in the front lines, answering the phones. If you had called 1-800-GOT-JUNK, I would have been one of the 80 people that answered the phones. Getting yelled at on occasion by customers. I was a frontline employee. So that's why I feel that I can speak to the frontline employees today and be relevant. Because it wasn't too long ago that I was in their shoes. But I knew that that wasn't enough. I couldn't just learn about one organization. So I said, you know what, I'm going to study the hell out of five companies that all grew through customer centricity. The five were Apple, Amazon, Zappos, WestJet Airlines in Canada, and Southwest Airlines. If there was a case study on them, I've read it. If there is an article on Inc., I've read it. I know everything about their CEOs. I've put in thousands of hours. Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 10, hours of, to be an expert, I've surpassed that. But I won't call myself an expert because it's way too easy to do that. I'm just somebody that's freaking passionate about what he does and I believe in the ROI of customer experience and that's what we're going to learn today and we're going to buy into it and we're going to be consistent to our commitment. I want to be in the position to be able to speak in front of a group like this one day. And I think I've done it. So what do I know about those five companies? I know that their marketing budgets are this big and their investment in customer experience is about 10 times that. Zappos doesn't invest in marketing. They, they do a little bit, but not very much. I know that 
all companies' core value is around employee and customer experience. Everything else is secondary. I know that they're all billion dollar brands. Now you may be saying, well, Michelle, I'm a SME. I'm a small and medium enterprise. Why, what can I relate to a billion dollar brand? And it makes sense. But remember, Amazon started off in 1997 in a garage. Jeff Bezos started the company in a garage. He had a cute little bell that would go off every single time he took, uh, sold a book. Needless to say, he had to disconnect that bell. They're now worth a hundred billion, they're a hundred billion dollar market cap company. So are we really gonna argue with their success? I don't think we should. I was so close to saying that they all have humble leaders, but I don't think Steve Jobs was super humble. So four out of five isn't bad. These companies, are obsessed over the customers. Jeff Bezos says he is willing to be misunderstood for long periods of time. What he means by that is he will make a bet. He will put all his chips in on a customer experience strategy. Wall Street hates that. I wrote a blog post that got picked up by Time Magazine about how Wall Street hates customer experience because the ROI of customer experience doesn't happen quarter over quarter. It may take 6, 12, 18, 24 months before you even see a dollar back. But again, are we going to argue with Jeff Bezos? He's, I think he's kind of prominent. So Wall Street hates customer experience because they work on quarters, right? And if you invest in something that isn't going to pay a dividend until two years from now, well, guess what happens to your stock? It goes down. But Amazon has shown that if their stock goes down, it'll go right back up. You have to invest in longevity. I want to talk to you guys about the custom, uh, customer experience timeline. We've already completed three stages of this timeline and we're entering the fourth. The first stage was pre-internet. My grandfather is one of my greatest mentors because he, all he did was focus on delivering wow service. I would visit him every single year from when I was like six until about 15, which is three years ago. It wasn't three years ago. Um, so when I would visit him in his store, I would take a stool and I would sit next to the register and you know, I would chat with him and such. And as I got older, I started to have a little bit of swagger. I thought, I, you know what, let's propose some business ideas. So one day I said, you know what, Granddad, why don't we print out a bunch of flyers and let's go around, canvas the neighborhood and try to acquire customers that way. And being the nice grandfather, he, he kind of nodded his head. He said, hey, you know, that's not a bad idea. When in reality, he's probably thinking like, that's an awful idea. So why don't, he said, why don't we focus on the 50 people that are in our store right now? And I surveyed the room and I was like, oh no, he's, he's getting Alzheimer's or he's losing his mind because there's only five people in the store. And then I pointed that out. I said, granddad, there's only five people in the store. And he's like, no, my 10 to one rule. Every single one of those people that are in the room, right in our store right now, have 10 friends that need my uh, service or product as well too. So why are we going out to acquire customers in a way that is not organic. They do not trust us. If we give them a flyer, they won't buy from us. At the very most, they'll remember who we are and then we're gonna have to give them an impression again and again and again. Why would we abandon the people that are in our store right now? Let's deliver wow service to each one of them and let's get the wallets of their friends and family members. Because I think that's a lot easier to wake up on Monday morning and having revenue grow organically rather than, and don't get me wrong, I have respect for SEO and PPC and all that stuff, but I don't think it should come before a proper referral program or strategy or an organic growth strategy. That was the first stage of my customer experience timeline is our grandparents. We need to operate our business like it's 1975. The second phase is the launch of the internet. I have a love-hate relationship with the internet. I love the internet because it's educated me like crazy, but it's also made me a little crazy. But, and then the second part why I hate it is because it ruined customer service. It ruined us as business professionals. We became dependent on the internet. We forgot how to care about our customers. Because think about it, whether you're a small or a medium-sized enterprise, or if you're a billion-dollar company, the launch of the internet came out and our eyes opened up.
because we could now acquire 10, 100, 10,000 new customers just like that by investing dollars. But the thing that happened when we did that is we reduced our customer retention budgets. We reduced our investment in customer service. The third stage, social media. Uh, if it was 2008, I would spend the entire hour telling you that uh, social media is the next big thing. We know that. I'm not going to state the obvious. It's a new channel to communicate. But what the social launch of the uh, social media did and the development of it, of it was it gave Mrs. Jones, that woman that we disappointed, a megaphone. And now she's blasting you and ripping into you. She is now taking her one person army and telling a thousand, a thousand of her friends. If you haven't acknowledged that customer experience, it's not here to, it's here to stay. It never went anywhere. We just ignored it. We were ignorant to it. And that's our fault. We became so dependent on customer acquisition in an inorganic way that we forgot about customer service. And now guess what? Now for most of us, maybe, most businesses, some huge Fortune 500 companies are scrambling social media. These people have a louder voice. They're communicating through there. We need to be there. And they expect us to have a major uh, improvement in customer experience. Their expectations have now gone through the roof because they have ammunition against us. The fourth phase, 2012 is right around the corner. So, or 2020 is right around the corner. And I spent a lot of time thinking about where has business been, where is it now, and where is it going? I, I bet a couple years ago that we would have something on our wrists that were, it was gonna be a huge development in innovation. And that's coming out with the iWatch. A couple years, maybe a year, it'll be out. But before that, who's familiar with Google Glass? A good chunk of the room. Okay, so Google Glass is is here. Uh, early adopters are playing with it, like Robert Scoble and some huge tech guys in the Valley. So what Google Glass is going to do is it is going to further change the way that consumers buy and make decisions. So let's say I'm walking down Newberry Street and I am in the market for a cake for a birthday, and I have a set of Google Glass on. And I see Pink Ribbon Bakery on Newberry Street. I am not going to enter Newberry or Pink Ribbon Bakery until I say, Glass, tell me Pink Ribbon Bakery's Yelp reviews. And then I'll have my Yelp reviews right in the corner of my eye. And that is when I'm going to make the decision of whether I am going to enter and purchase from Pink Ribbon Bakery. There are no more barriers of entry. If you think there's barriers of entry in your business, in your industry, you're dead wrong. Because somebody as crazy as me would enter your industry if I see weakness. Look for people that have that spark in their eye. Invest in them. Even if they don't have the skill set that you're fully looking for, take a gamble. Because you can train for uh, skill, you can't train for will. Who has a child that's 16 years or older? Okay, a good portion of the room. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but when they turned 16 and they passed their driver's license, that was probably one of the worst days in your life because you had to hand over the, uh, your car keys to them, right? You know what's crazier? You're, without training your employees properly, you're handing them the keys to your business. That pays for that car. Our frontline employees have to be the smartest people in the room. They have to be the most educated. We need to know our customers inside and out. We need to know what makes them tick and what ticks them off. And it's not anecdotal. How often do you catch yourselves in your weekly management meetings and you find yourself saying, I think we should do this? Or the next person says, no, 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 we should do this. Who are you? You're not the customer. Why are you making decisions based on what your customers want? Ask them. They're the ones, here's a reality check. You don't pay your employees. Your, employee, empl your customers pay you to pay your employees. So you really need to make decisions based on what they're telling you. The only way that people are gonna compete now is on service. It is, customer experience is the new battleground. That is where you fight. You don't fight on pricing. Customer retention is, is the carrot cake of business. It's there, we know it's there, but nobody wants anything to do with it. It gets no love at all. But I get it. When somebody complains about your business, your ego's hit.
That is your business and we get defensive. Customers don't expect us to be perfect, but they do expect us, if we mess up, they want it to be acknowledged and they want us to learn from it. They want to give us another chance. We just need to step up to the plate and ask for it. Customer experience is like the sixth man in basketball. Brings tons of value, but gets very little recognition often.